guys, um, it's Med School Mila here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, you are getting me straight off of work and I came straight to record you all a YouTube video and it's because I'm excited. I am so excited because it's something that I have been meaning to do and first of all, just being more consistent on YouTube, but also giving you all content that I think you can use, um, especially as pre-meds and honestly, anybody that's going through um, kind of a new season and change. And so what I'm gonna bring to you all is my interview series. You've proven yourself enough to get an interview spot, and now what do you do? The series that I'm gonna be recording, which is the video right now, is going to be three questions that you need to be prepared about before you walk in that interview. And I'm gonna give you some tips and pointers of how to navigate that questioning, because it can be really tough. The second interview, and I, I literally wrote notes you guys because I'm so excited about this interview series. Interview stories from when I was on my interview trail applying to medical school because I felt like I had a pretty crazy experience like a lot of good things, a lot of bad things and so just breaking down my experiences, what I would do differently. The third video I'm going to be creating in my interview series is answering your why and how to spin kind of negatives into positives. How do I explain that I, I had to retake my MCAT a few times? How do I explain my bad grades one year? How do I explain my like three ga years of gap years? And so that's gonna be the third interview um, video question series. And then the fourth video, I'm still trying to figure out if I can do it. I was gonna do a what to wear, especially for my women's. Um, on interview day, but you know, interview outfits are expensive. So to be honest, I probably only have one or two outfits. Like if I if I have more outfits or if I can like finesse some things to kind of come together, I will definitely um, put that together, especially if I have three or more, but I feel like two outfits is kind of lame. I mean, if some companies could sponsor you, girl, New York and Company, that's where I got my interview outfit for med school. You know, hit me up so I can show off your clothes for interviews, but that's neither here nor there. But let's get into this interview, which is answering the three questions that you must know before getting on that interview trail. Let's start. The first question is, and I wrote some notes here, why should we choose you? That question, I hate that question. Cause I'm like, because bitch, I'm applying. Like, just accept me, I'm cool. But like, how do you, just word that a little differently so you can market yourself a little better. I get it. You don't want to do, and I'm telling you, do not do this. Do not explain your whole personal statement. That is not the point. They've already read it. They've already said, read your secondaries. They've read it all. So I'm. they are asking you this to give, they want something different from you, right? So that's the point. Think about something different, which is why I'm telling you to research ahead of time before and, and come up with something before you get there. Okay, there, I'm gonna give you five tips on how to answer this because this is where a lot of our insecurities come out. And so I'm going to skirt you there, skirt, don't do that. No insecurities, this is time for confidence only, okay? The first tip that I have is do not lie. You are a gym, tell your story. Um, I noticed when I would talk to people about their interviews, um, they would kind of start making excuses for themselves. And that's not the point of this. Don't try to make um, one experience that actually wasn't important to you important. Like, don't do any of that. Be genuine with yourself and actually tell your story. The way I did it was that I was talking to my friend. I literally, she just asked me the same question. Why, why you? Why should we choose you? Why do you want to go to this med school? And then I was just talking like a friend and then she was like, okay, I see these themes. And so that might be one way to kind of pick out some new themes that you never really thought or never, never really considered before. Um, but you do want to share your story and um, not manipulate because they can read through the bullshit so fast and that you're telling your story and that you're just being genuine and honest and you would be surprised how much um, you know, you can come up with answers for that. Number two, do not compare yourself. So who cares if somebody went to Harvard? Who cares if somebody's coming from a family of doctors? Who cares if they already have their PhD in neuroscience? Who cares if they started a nonprofit in India helping children? Literally, who cares? 
I need you to have that attitude because I need you to be the bad bitch in there. And so when I say don't compare yourself, you're gonna really, and I did this. I'm only speaking from experience. I would be like, dang, you got a nonprofit? Like, I just worked for a nonprofit. Like, that's all I got. And like, Harvard, you went from Harvard, you went to Columbia. I went to like this small private school at Chapman that we just partied a lot. Like awkward um especially if you like went to community college like don't compare yourself once you're there you're there everybody's on the same playing field it should make you feel a lot better that you're just as competitive as these people with these things on their application so and you start talking to people in your interview you're gonna start seeing a lot of different stories and well i didn't do that and how many publications did you get number three if you don't carry yourself like you're gonna be a physician why should they? If you don't believe that you're going to be a doctor, why should they? That is the type of confidence I need you to bring to this answer of why should we choose you? It's not a, oh, well, maybe, because I don't know. Nah, I, that's, I'm not choosing you out of a thousand people. I need you to be confident. I need you to deliver your story. Like you showing them your purpose. That's the point, right? So that they have no question about you that you're gonna actually be a good seat in their class and that you're going to be a doctor no matter what. Even if it's not that med school, like you you know you're gonna be a doctor. Now you're trying to figure out on this interview trail which school is the best for you. Do you see that difference? It's not, please accept me, oh my God, I just wanna be a doctor so bad. It's, all right, so like, what do you have to offer me? Cause I'm gonna be a doctor regardless, poo, regardless. Like, that's all. And so I want you to come with that confidence. Don't sit there and beg for a spot. That is not the way to go through it. It is you understanding your purpose, putting in the work, putting in money, and now showing up to figure out if this is a place for you to complete your purpose and your career and your destiny and whatever else uh, kind of epiphanies you have for your life. And so if you don't have that confidence, neither will they. If you have one inkling of, I don't know if I'm ready, I mean, I know other people are better, maybe they're gonna be like, yeah, maybe. Like, don't give them that. Literally give them nothing but like confidence um, that you know what the hell you're doing. And I know this, I'm gonna give us a little disclaimer, especially for my people of color, especially for my women's, anybody that's been marginalized, I think, we sometimes find ourselves with this imposter syndrome of like, yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, to be honest. But there's a lot of people that don't know what they're doing, especially people that are in dominant categories. I'm just gonna say it, like, just because you're a white male doesn't mean you know what you're doing, right? And so they, but this is what white men do have, and I will give them this. They know how to fucking sell themselves. I mean, fire festival people, they were like, yeah, it seems like you know what the hell you're doing. Here's a million dollars. Like, that is how you, that is how convincing you need to be when you're on these interview trails. I'm telling you, sell yourself, what's his name? I'm gonna look it up. Billy, Billy McFarlane, okay? That boy knew, no matter if he was full of shit or not, he knew what he was, how to sell himself, right? And he sounded so confident and so clear in his vision. People bought in, people gave him I mean, too much, to be honest. People like us that don't really know and we're like, oh, well, we have to prove ourselves. We have to work so hard for this and we still don't know. Throw all that out the window because y'all are all on the same playing field. So you really have to tap into some probably part of you that you never really knew that you had. Um, build it up within yourself, whatever you need to do. Just don't fall in that imposter syndrome category self-doubt, self-blame, uh, all that. We don't have time for that during interview season. Now, I'm not saying that you can't work on um, self-confidence. Like self-confidence is totally different. We can work, that's a whole lifetime process. But during these interviews, baby, you are Billy McFarlane. You are doing it. You are going to be the best doctor and now you're here trying to figure out what they can do for you. That is the type of energy I need you to bring to these interviews, period. The fourth tip, making them know that if they choose you, that you will definitely come. But make sure that you are are coming off as somebody that um, is really attracted to that school for a reason and that um, through this interview process, you really wanna make sure that this is the right fit for you. That's a really good one. Um, and then bottom line, the, the fifth tip I have for answering this first question of why should I choose you, fit the school as well as they fit you. 
So this is why this is different than your personal statement, right? Your personal statement is telling your story as to how you got to medicine. Your interview question of why should I choose you is I'm choosing you because you're choosing me. That's a totally different question, which is why I don't want you to repeat your personal statement. I want you to match your qualities and your specific stories to what they have to offer. And so if you say, why should I choose you? Well, I, I, I think you should choose me because I love New York City. And I know that this is the city that I am alive in. And I know that with my family and friends around, I can really feel supported and succeed. I can do this and that and from my story of this and that, I can do it, right? So. Just think about that so that they know, like, I'm choosing you because I know that you'll be successful here with all these extra variables that you never really considered in the first place. Um, so think about that. Talk it over with a few friends. Talk it over again. Write it down because that is a question they are guaranteed to ask you. I'm actually going to read a quote um, because I think this is really important. This is a question that doesn't happen in all interviews, but it's a thing that you can apply for a lot of different questions. So let me read this kind of quote to you. Um, this is, by the way, none of these questions are like direct verbatim what I've gotten from schools. This is just like my experience from all different interviews. So the second question is, why do you want to be a doctor and not other medical specialties? So quote I found on the internet that I thought was pretty cool, so I figured I would read it. Um, authority used to be used to separate doctors from nurses. Doctors can write and can prescribe meds, but now so can many advanced practice nurses. Doctors can write orders, so can nurse practitioners. Doctors can examine you and diagnose you, so does your nurse practitioner. Lifestyle and money? Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, primary care doctors mix less than a nurse anesthesiologist, and lifestyle ain't shit. Um, some doctors don't take call anymore, many nurses do, even those with advanced degrees. So what's the difference? What is the reason why you want to be a doctor and not a nurse and not a PA and not a dentist and not any other important part of the medical field, right? And if you don't have the answer to that question, that's actually a good question you should ask yourself. And if you don't know, um, I'm not gonna give you the answer. I think there's a few different kind of answers, but one thing I want you to kind of hone in on is that idea of leadership. You're leading a team. And so if you can come back to a specific time in your life, it does not have to be medically related, where you were the leader of the team and you made executive decisions based on the work and the sacrifice you put in, and you wanna be held accountable for that decision, that is what a doctor is. And so I want you to think about your personal experiences and think how that kind of aligns with the role of a doctor on a team. Emphasize that team emphasis because there's no way doctors can be successful without every single person on their team. And so um, think about that. I'm not gonna kind of give y'all, I'm not gonna give you every answer that I gave, um, but that is a really important question. And it's actually, just something you should think by yourself. Like, why did you gravitate to the field of medicine as a doctor? But one thing I also want to emphasize is this idea of being held accountable for your actions. Um, because we are the people that get sued, right? But because we asked for that. Like, we asked for that amount of responsibility. So making sure that you feel like you can make decisions, and not only make decisions, but understand not only the good consequences, but the bad consequences of those decisions. And because you really trust yourself and you believe that you are gonna work hard to make correct decisions, and you feel like the doctor is the right calling for you. I don't know, it's just an idea. The last question I want you all to consider, um, and something that I got asked on my interviews a lot is medical ethics. Um, because this is something that is kind of booming in the medical industry because, med I mean, medicine has been fucked up. Like, we have fucked a lot of people up. And so it's important to kind of weed out these crazies and these psychopaths because there's doctors that are kind of crazy. And so with these questions, you need to think about your ethics as to why you're doing it. And if you don't know medical ethics, maybe this is the time to just kind of understand the principles. There's like four principles, like non-maleficence and autonomy and, or sorry, yeah, non-maleficence and justice and all these things. And so look at the four principles of of medical ethics and there's questions online about like different scenarios 
and if they put you in them, what you would do. And I would say, you don't have to look at all those scenarios, maybe do a couple and then um, see kind of like how people are answering them, but it always comes down to those four principles. So if you can at least even name one principle, they would be like, oh, she knows medical ethics. Like she got it, he got it. So I would say at least know those four principles in medical ethics um, and try to apply them to a few different situations. Um, see how you feel about them. And then maybe even say like, you know, my, pers my first instinct would be this. But then now I think about it like as a role, like if I was a physician, if I was a med student, if I was a resident, um, I really know it's important to kind of take into account the role of autonomy and consent in, the, in a medical process. And this is what I would be concerned about. Like be able to answer and they already know you think like a physician. And it's not even, you'll, you'll learn these things along the way. Like you'll go through medical ethics classes when you're in medical school, um, but you really have to make sure that you're already giving them that idea of like, oh, she thinks like a doctor. Like she takes in multiple perspectives and she's not acting so perfect. Like, oh, that's terrible. Of course I would report everybody that um, smells like alcohol. Like be like, you know what, that's my friend. I feel bad. I'm gonna try to figure out what's going on. But if they were kind of, interrupting patient care, then I have to do something about it. Because as a doctor, that's the role I take. Perfect, right? You're not acting so goody tissue that you're gonna be a snitch, but you also understand the roles that you have as a physician to the point where you know when right is wrong and you can do it regardless of who is involved, right? So those are my three questions that I think you should be considering. The first one is why should we choose you to be a part of our program? The second one is going to become a doctor and not a PA or a nurse or a dentist or whatever, or researcher. The third question is about medical ethics and learn those four key medical ethics principles. It'll take you very far. And that's all I have for y'all today. Um, subscribe, let me know what you think. Any other questions, leave in the comments and I'll make sure I respond to everybody. Follow my Instagram, follow my blog, uh, Med, Med School Mila, and I will speak to y'all soon. Bye.